And with the recent announcement and release of Houdini 20, Houdini now comes with a couple of cool improvements and features, and this cuts across animation, character effects, camera XP for rendering, environment, and also VFX, with hundreds of enhancements and new workflows that now allows artists to create, rig, and also enhance their scenes with some amazing visual elements. So whether you're into animation, character effects, environment, VFX, or probably you're just thinking about doing some meshing, then Houdini 20 might just be a very cool tool that you might want to explore. And today we're going to take a look at the brand new quad remesh that is currently in beta of course there's a new update to top of flow which is really good and for quad remesh this is an interesting tool that is now available to houdini artists most other artists from different dcc apps can also take advantage of this and we're going to take a look at how you can explore this we're going to be looking at three major things firstly how does this handle meshes and edge flows secondly what is the performance like and how much time does it take to remesh a single mesh depending on the complexity that it has and finally if you're coming from other dcc apps how can you take advantage of this cool new feature with the free apprentice version that side effects provides and for those who are thinking about getting a fresh copy of houdini 20 all you need to do is go over to sideeffects.com go over to the get section and click on download you need to sign in first and once you do that, you now notice that there is a brand new launcher and an old installer. The launcher is a more recommended version, which actually allows you to install and keep history of previous installs of Houdini. With the launcher, you'll be able to manage, update, uninstall, and move your licenses however you want. And for this demo, we're going to use the launcher and download a free apprentice version and explore the brand new quad remesh. So with Houdini 20 open right here, we can simply throw in a geometry and in there we're going to throw in a box and we can throw in a simple sphere. Now with this there, we can do a simple boolean and if we pipe in the box and the sphere, we can start doing some boolean operation. Let's just simply increase this so that we can see what we have. And by default, there is a remesh tool that exists in Houdini. Now the idea behind this remesh tool is to get you some triangulated remeshes, but with a quad remesh, you now have a cooler option. Of course, there are iterations to this older version that exists, but with the quad mesh, you now create quads automatically. So once we load in the node, and we click on this button you would automatically notice that we have it and of course you can control this however you choose now this is the most basic example of and for us to drive the point home of how you get to compare this with some interesting tools we need to load in the big guns which is actually zbrush so with zbrush open right here we already know that zbrush has become like that undisputed champion in terms of how you get to work with meshes and how you get to remesh them the mesh which we're looking at here is the demo frog that comes with zbrush and this currently has 355,000 points so first things we're going to do is just have this one selected and hit on the Z remesh. ZBrush takes a look at the mesh, analyzes it and remeshes it. Now the good thing with Z remesh is all of the meshing are quads and this looks pretty clean. So how does this stack up with Houdini? So right here in Houdini, we're going to create a new file node. So with a new file node, we're going to go all the way to the geometry file because this is a read file and we'll load the demo frog which we previously exported. And the next thing which you need to do is to throw in the quad remesh. Now you'd notice something pretty significant. This takes a shorter time to actually do the quad remeshing compared to what we have with ZBrush. And because of the procedural nature of Houdini, you can still be within your quad remesh node, make sure that it's visible and you can play with the target count so you can go slightly lower go all the way up to make it dense and you can just simply go back and forth this currently has two output types but i'll simply suggest that you stay within the extracted mesh as this is one that i've noticed that works really fine and doesn't throttle your pc when you're trying to do your quad remeshing now let's push this a little bit with something slightly complex so we do have the greyhound and this looks really good and this is slightly more of a complicated mesh now let's zero mesh this and see the results we have this looks good. This is actually something that you can work with, especially if you're trying to just have something that you want to use in your games. And for this one, let's throw it into Houdini and see how it handles it. And instead of loading a new file, because Houdini is super procedural, we can click on this button and load in that Greyhound that we exported before. And this is just going to take a look and get us something really quick. So we can also go around it. And this is pretty neat. So this is at 11,000. And what we have here in ZBrush is also at 11,000. And this example so far look pretty good. Let's draw in the Artemis model, which is also a demo model from ZBrush, and see how both ZBrush and Houdini handles this. Now for the Artemis one, you can tell that ZBrush is doing all of the necessary things to keep the mesh sane within 37,000. But then we are losing details with the base. This is a combination of an organic and a hard surface model, and you can tell that ZBrush seems to struggle 
around areas like this. Of course, there are modes and methods and patterns and procedures that you can use to retain the meshes, but this is out of the box ZBrush Z meshing, and you can see the kind of quality that we're getting. Changing guess to Houdini, Houdini seems to be doing something quite interesting with the whole thing. And just like we said, Houdini handles this slightly faster than what you have with ZBrush. So in terms of speed, Houdini does a very good job of that. But now you'd notice it is doing more of a uniform distribution across the entire mesh. And this has its own pros and cons. The pro part is you have fidelity across the entire mesh. Like take a look at what you have here in Houdini versus what you have in ZBrush. With the same poly count, you do have every part sort of preserved in one way or the other. In ZBrush, we probably lost a couple of those because it doesn't really understand how to do with the hard surface and the organic part at the same time. This also gives you some very interesting edge loops, but one thing which it sacrifices here, which I don't think a lot of people would actually care about, especially if you know how to walk around your mesh, is the edge flow. So the edge flow compared to what you have with ZBrush is sort of interesting. In fact, let's use the frog as an example. So with the frog here in ZBrush, you can tell that we have some edge flows preserved. That is slightly not the same thing that we have in Houdini. Now, in Houdini, you probably would lose the movement of those edges. And this is one of those things to keep in mind. For ZBrush, you're sort of sacrificing some sense of speed. In Houdini, however, you have the speed, you have the mesh, you have the fidelity. But then if you take a look at this section, you notice that we lost that detail. Of course, you would also notice that you've got a couple of wrappings going on there. And this is where your artistic skill comes in. So if you're just thinking about doing a quick remesh, which you can take into the DCC app of choice and start building based off these and start doing your retopology, this is perfect. If you're also thinking about just getting these and probably there's one section you like to remesh, maybe there's also, you just want to create something really quick, you don't really care about edge flows, maybe you're into animation and you don't really care about edge deformations, probably you're just creating something for your game, then this is a perfect pick. And I'll suggest that you go ahead and check it out. For those who will be thinking, okay, so how can you export this and take this over to the DCC app of choice? So for this one, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is dial in a file node and the file node which you're going to drop in here, you have to wire that and change it from read to write. Click on this button, define the name and an extension. It's very necessary you put the extension. So this is frogfromh.obj and then we're going to click on the word accept. Now, once you click on accept, you notice nothing gets registered. Things start getting registered once you turn on the visibility button. And the minute you do that, automatically, you notice you've got that. So if you're working in your DCC app, you would like to use this, you can now go over to maybe any app, in this case, Blender, go over to File, go over to Import, and go over to Import Wavefront OBJ, and you have your file right here. So you can click on that Import button and get that file loaded in. So just in case you're wondering, how you can take advantage of Houdini in terms of working with Blender, of course you can. So this is it. This is a free quad remesh tool that anyone can take advantage of and start working with. You can definitely go over to Houdini right now and download the apprentice version and take full advantage of the quad remesh, which is currently in beta and start creating stuff for yourself. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.